Hi folks, it's the Ghost Saboteur here again, back with another video in the Basics of Teletype series. Just felt that it'd be important to put together a quick video on the subject of variables. We use variables quite a lot in Teletype coding, so I felt it might be a good idea to get familiar with them before we continue on with this video series. Just finding out what they are, and why and how we use them. Let's get stuck in. A variable is a location in Teletype's memory where we can store a value. Think of it as a container. A value can be put in the container and it will just sit there until you put another value in there. So why is this useful, I hear you ask? Well, it can be used in many different ways within Teletype. Think of a situation where we might have a value that needs to be used by multiple parts of our program. Rather than just putting the same value in all the multiple parts, you could put that value in a variable and then have each part of the program reference that variable. It just means then you don't have to type the value out multiple times. And in addition, if you wanted to change that value, you'd only need to change it in one place. Another use may be that you have two scripts in a teletype program that are producing two values that you need to do a mathematical calculation on. Well, you could do that mathematical calculation and place the result in a variable so that it could be used by another part of the program. So for the purposes of coding, each of the variables that Teletype has available has its own letter associated with it. And this is what we're going to look at next. So firstly, we have the variables A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, and T, which are all what we call global variables. There are also a couple of other variables, J and K, which are local variables, and I'll explain the difference between these shortly. But before we get to that, for the purposes of demonstrating variables, I need to show you a quick keyboard binding that we use in live mode. So if you're not in live mode, hit tab just to toggle through. And when we get there, we can hit the key tilde which is the little line on the keyboard, um, you'll find the variables display, which has all of the variables that I mentioned from the global variables list and their associated values. And as you'll see going forward, this is quite a handy display to have. So as I said previously, variables A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, and T are all global variables. And what this means is that the values stored in these variables can be accessed and used by the program as a whole. That could be in edit mode in our scripts, or it could be in live mode. So if we wanted to use the values stored in X on script one, we could, and we could also use it in script six, or we could even manipulate it via live mode by changing the variable there. If we take a look at the variables display, we can see by default X, Y, Z and T are set to zero. But A, B, C and D are set to one, two, three and four respectively. Don't worry too much about the reason for this. The thing to understand is that they can all be used in the same way. So to assign a value to a variable in Teletype, it's as simple as typing the name of the variable followed by a value. So if we look at the value of X on the variables display, it's currently set to zero. If we want to change that value, all we'd need to do is type x, followed by a space, and then the new value that we want it to become. In this case, let's do 101. And if we hit return, we can now see that the value of x has changed to 101. And this can be changed at any time we like, either by inputting a new value via the live mode, or it could be changed within the scripts. So if I do that again, x, space, two, zero, one, hit return, and that now changes. So now we've set the value of X, we need to know how we can recall or get that value so that it can be used elsewhere in the program. So retrieving or getting a value from a variable is super simple. It's as easy as typing the name of the variable, in this case, X, and hitting return. And you'll see on the live mode display, we now get the variable value returned. If I decide to assign a different number to the variable, I can do that easily and recall in the same way. It's a practical example of how we could use global variables. Let's hop over to edit mode. So 
So just to explain the patch that I've set up, all we have is our ER301 with two oscillators set up on there playing a two note chord. They're being triggered or an envelope is being triggered so that you can hear them repeatedly. And each of the volts per octave inputs of the oscillators have a CV being sent to them from the teletype CV output one and two. So as far as the code's concerned, on the metronome, which is set to 1000 milliseconds, we have three lines of code. The first line is sending a trigger pulse out of trigger output one, which will trigger the ADSR. The second line is our CV output to oscillator one. And the second one is our second CV output to oscillator two. You can see that both the CVs have the X variable, which is our global variable connected to them. And that variable is set on script number one, and it's currently set to zero. So if I start the sequence going, you can now hear the chords sounding. And if I go to our value of X and change that to a different value, let's say seven, press F1 to activate this script. And you can now hear that both tones of the chord have changed simultaneously by the same amount. I can change that to something different, say five. Hit F1 again. And the same thing happens again. We can send it back to its original pitch. So just as a further demonstration to this, we don't just have to change the value of X in the scripts in our edit mode. We could, if we wanted to, change it in live mode as well. Just in the same way that we changed the value of X previously, we can type X with a space and change it to a new value. Let's say six, hit return. And now we can hear that the pitch has changed on the oscillators in the same way as it did when we activated it from the scripts. So hopefully you can see from this example that using global variables is a much more efficient way of changing multiple values. Rather than going around your program and changing each value individually, you can go to your global variable and just change it once. It makes life so much easier. J and K are essentially the same as the other variables, but you may notice that they're not shown on the variables display in live mode. And this is because they're not global variables, but rather local variables. And what this means is if in live mode, we assign J a value in the same way that we did with X previously. So in this case, I'm going to assign it the value 666, hit return. Now we should have a value of 666 stored for variable J. And we can check this by recalling the value in the same way as we did with X by typing J and hitting return. But this time we get the value of zero returned and not the number of the beast. And the reason for this is because we can only use local variables in edit mode in our scripts, not on the live mode. And more precisely, each script has its own J and K variable assigned to it, which only that script can access. So to demonstrate this, we can go back to our oscillator example from the global variables and this time we have two scripts, script one and two here. So both scripts have a value for the variable J and both scripts have a CV command that will send that value out to the oscillators on the ER301. So script one looks like this, script two looks like this. So if I start the oscillators, we can hear our lovely chord again and in this case, if I change the value of J on script one to seven, and if I activate that by pressing F1, you'll hear that oscillator one raises in pitch now, but oscillator two doesn't. If we had changed a global variable in this situation, both pitches would have raised simultaneously. I can demonstrate this further by going to script two and changing the value of J in that script. Hit return, hit F2 this time. 
and you can see again just the single pitch raises rather than both simultaneously. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need to use a variable and you're only using that in one script, it's advisable to use the J and K variable because this allows you to save the global variables for use with global things within your program. You only have a certain amount of global variables and you need to use them quite sparingly, especially in larger programs. So having these local variables gives you a few more to play with. So that's it for variables for now. If you're looking through the manual, you've probably noticed that there are other variables available on the teletype, which I haven't covered in this video, but inevitably I will get round to that in another video. But for the time being, knowing about these basic variables will definitely be enough to get you started. I really hope this video has been useful, and if you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. It really does help grow the channel and get these videos out to more people, so any help is much appreciated. Again, let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to cover in future videos, or maybe something I've missed that you'd like me to cover. Just let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.